Hello, everyone. I am Frank Data DiLorenzo here for another exciting broadcast of Quick Launch Live. And today, I'm real excited to uh, talk to you about paginated reports, a little known piece of Power BI that sometimes gets overlooked, but is fantastic for uh, financial reporting uh, and some other financial statements that you may want to create. Uh, so to really bring this home today, I'm excited to uh, report that I've got with us our VP of Product Management, who is very passionate about financials, knows it very well, very skilled with paginated reports. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Ben Harrison. Ben, hello. Hi, Frank. How uh, are you? Happy holidays. I'm glad to be here today. All right. Yeah, and happy holidays, everybody. Uh, we have the Christmas tree up. We're as festive as can be around here. And uh, we're real excited to talk today about financial statements and it's kind of funny when I say that excitement and financial statements, but but we are. And uh, so what I asked Ben to do is kind of show us how you can design financial statements, some of the little nuances that make paginated reports a more effective tool than maybe Power BI or even Excel. So Ben's going to going to walk us through that. But just as a FYI, I'm not sure if everybody's aware, but um, SSRS, SQL Reporting Services. Um, is the evolved paginated reports evolved from that solution. It is a now basically a part of the Power BI uh, framework. So if you've used SSRS, certain solutions, like I believe Viewpoint used it uh, for dashboards, this is that tool kind of evolved into Power BI. Ben, is there anything you would add to that before we jump? No, and there's, a, <clears throat> there's certainly certain times when you're gonna really want to use a tool like SSRS. And that's kind of what we wanna talk about today. Uh, so looking at the why, why would we want a paginated report? So, uh, All right. And so uh, before we jump in, just as uh, housekeeping items, if you're with us live, please put a one in the chat. Tim, Chase, great to see you both out there. LinkedIn user, love the tree. I'm going to share that one. Thank you for that. Um, if you're out with us live, put a one in the chat. Uh, all of these recordings, so you know, if you go to our preferred strategies LinkedIn company page, uh, we have all the recordings out there, so you can view them at any time. If you view it after the fact, put a two in there if you wouldn't mind. We love to see that, you know, they're being viewed and adding value. And remember, the spirit of these 15-minute uh, uh, broadcasts are to give you some food for thought around data, being more data-driven, being more effective with your reporting and dashboards. And if it's something you ever want to talk about further, anybody at Preferred Strategies would, would love to do that. Reach out to myself, Ben. Anybody on the team, if we can help you be more data driven, that's really our mission. So uh, please, if you have questions as well, put them in the comments and uh, we will address everything as, as quickly as we can. So with 15 minutes, let me try and be quiet. You all know how, how hard that can be for me sometimes and hand it over to Ben. Ben, are you ready for me to share your, your screen? Yes, please do. All right, there we go, Ben, <clears throat> take it away. So what I wanted to start with here, Frank, was just kind of set up the stage of, of why or when would you want a paginated report? And you know, we've talked about our, our common data model or you know, our quick launch data engine. And it's really useful when you're using a tool like Power BI because you can drag in and drop. In this case, I've dragged in our, our income statement hierarchy and I've brought in actual amount year to date and it worked great. It's real simple, real easy, very really user friendly. But unfortunately, the source data, the, where the information is coming from the general ledger, you know, revenue is a negative number. And so if you get all right. revenue here, you get a negative number. And then, of course, uh, expenses, cost of goods sold is a positive number. And the bottom is the result is a negative number. That means that's good. I'm making money. I'm not losing money. But <clears throat> often you want more control over the rows and and what they say and how you group them and and what's positive, what's negative. And that's where a <clears throat> SSRS report or a paginated report is gonna be very, very effective. Again, so this is the same data model we've talked before, but if I'm looking at it, maybe through a paginated report, I can come up with a format like this. <clears throat> In this case, I've got uh, very distinct groupings. I can group my revenue very, you can control this so much uh, uh, more tightly and there's times when you want that like an income statement or a balance sheet or even a cash flow statement that you need to distribute and very very structured but in this case obviously we change the sign on revenue we've kept the correct sign on cost of sales and down at the bottom we've reversed the sign again so in one single column we're treating the same number 
maybe actual amount month to date or actual amount year to date, but we're treating it conditionally based upon where we're grouping it in the report. So that's that's what people want paginated reports for. The beautiful thing about this paginated report built in here is you can still do any of that drill down that we've talked about before. So I can drill into the revenue, uh, I can drill into the next down, maybe the object account, and eventually still drill down to the final transactional detail. So you didn't lose any of that capability that we have within the model and, and Power BI, but you are getting that um, uh, that structure that makes the uh, reporting really, really nice and effective. Uh, while you're in here in Power BI, there's all the other functions that you get um, that you'd like to have. You can do file, print, that's always nice. You can actually embed this in, in different uh, formats, different pages, a SharePoint type of site. You can do all the exporting, right? So I can export into Excel, PDF, uh, just make a CSV file out of it. So again, a lot of interactivity you get with the reporting platform that is important uh, to someone who maybe is using this. What I really like still is that idea of I'm gonna create a subscription. Mm -hmm. um, I used to distribute reports. I think I've mentioned it before, maybe on this, this uh, LinkedIn Live. It's a real chore to get the, the right report subscribed to the right people. They change the, what they need. Instead of Thursday this week, they want it on Wednesday for some reason. And so the fact that people can come in and create their own subscription to reports is using that Power BI functionality, but also applying it to these paginated reports. Uh, likewise, you can have the commenting function. So I can still do the same questions before, or I might even ask Frank, um, or probably I'm going to congratulate Frank saying, great job. Oh, this is in the holiday spirit. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate it. I know, I might, might do that. And so <clears throat> as before, and I think we've talked about this feature built into Power BI as a, as a platform, it really changes how you might collaborate, how you might talk about reports, how you might uh, consume these things. So, um, so Ben, on that note, I did get your notification. If I click it on my mobile, it's doing something. It's doing something. It's still doing something. It is opening up that very report on my mobile so I can interact with it, drill down, research. So just I don't know how easily you can see it on the, yeah, it's tough on the virtual screen, but it actually did come up so I can see the same thing Ben's commenting on. Sorry to interrupt you, Ben, but I wanted to mention that. So again, great, great uh, structure control on paginated reports. You can have uh, different versioning. So I could actually run this by consolidated, by company, by business unit, change the year and the period. I can change what I'm comparing from a maybe actual to budget to actual to prior year. And those are the types of flexibility that you got one report format, but a lot of ways then to present that uh, format. So uh, what I like about the paginated reports, again, is you get that the very structured control of the layout on the on the page. They do tend to be rows and columns, but there's times when that's the right data. It is possible to put uh, charts and graphs into a paginated report, you know, pie charts or bar charts. Um, but honestly, charts and graphs are so much more effective within the Power BI service, you know, the base functionality that uh, you, our opinion is use paginated reports for very formatted structured rows and columns and use the standard Power BI functionality for the charts, bars, uh, you know, scatter graphs, all the other cool things that make Power BI so, so powerful. So Ben, let me ask you, in the spirit of being data driven, how does a transformed data model, this is the end result, this is the reporting tool, and it's pretty cool. And I love the fact that you can drill down, subscribe, comment. How often does someone look at a financial statement and say, geez, I don't think that number is correct. And they have to go run a, a separate history report to try and marry it up. So that's all great. But um, how does a transformed data model help this be more effective, if I may ask that? Well, we are dealing with that one single data set, right? So in my, if I have another chart somewhere that's looking at actual revenue month to date for this company for this time and period, that transformed data model will be um, the, always the same number. The other thing that that transformed data model is is there's a lot of, lot of of uh, you know you think of 
extract, transform, and load in a data analytics world, that transformation is very important to be consistent. You know, what's an actual amount? Uh, what are actual quantities? Uh, there's there's um, thousands of definitions of things that you want to use and refer to. Uh, the idea of gross profit does not exist in the ERP system itself. It's a calculation. So if you're defining what it means to be gross profit, uh, you want to be very consistent and have that true everywhere. <clears throat> That's true of, I'm sorry about my voice, of you know what is expenses? Expenses is a grouping of accounts out of your general ledger. And so the idea that this governed data set defines expenses one time means that we're all looking at the same expenses. So that, that governed transformed data model makes your entire enterprise uh, singing from the same songbook, so to speak. So whether I opened or try to create this report, or I was building this report in Excel or a graphic representation, let's say using Power BI, better tool for that, uh, it's pulling the same source of data. That's, That's correct. That's where the yeah. governance comes into play. Would that be accurate? Yes. And Ben, anything on um, creating these reports? It is, but you don't have to open it up because we only have a few minutes, but just in terms of speaking to it, uh, what is the tool like to be able to build these? I want to build my own report. So, okay, no, that's a good, good that. question. And I won't open it up because it, it's, it's busy, but it is a free tool. It's called, uh, you know, Pagination Reports. It's actually exactly like uh, uh, the real program is called Web Report Builder. And so if I, I can't edit it from this particular spot, but if I go back to my, my general ledger report here and go back to my workspace, uh, don't save, uh, you'll see that the income statement is here and it's got a little different icon here. So if I do that, I, I would have the option to say, edit in Power BI Report Builder. So it's a little bit different interface, but I could actually do it from the web. It's a web driven tool. And they're really just saying, okay, I want this row and this column, and I want to define that intersection to be what, right? And uh, what's summarized, uh, again, very, every single cell on the report is formatable. So uh, form, formatable, is that the right word? You can <laughs> format them differently so that this cell and the one cell next to it can have completely different formats. And you need to do that sometimes uh, when you're building these types of reports. So very, very powerful tool, very specific use case. And Ben, one last question. I noticed when you drill down to the details, you have the detailed transactions, which really answers the question as to you know how I got to that summary number. Is it possible to also in paginated reports have scanned images that back up that transactional data available to me? You can. Uh, you can have a, a link. Uh, uh, largely, it uh, depends on where your data is stored. You were out in the web browser, so you need to be able to have access to that data. Uh, either through a firewall uh, protection or it needs to just be generally web-based, but you could easily build links into the data model that just hyperlink you right to that, that real document. And we have a couple examples that we show then our normal demo of that happening in accounts payable, but mm -hmm. it could easily be journal entries. It could be anything. AP invoices, purchase yeah. orders, anything like that. Well, that's great, Ben. Any other final words? We're already... These 15 minutes go by so quickly. We're at 14 minutes. With the last minute, Ben, is there any suggestions or comments you'd like to make to the audience today? Well, I think that it's just important to realize that when you're thinking of your common data model, you have multiple tools at, at, your, at, at your, your fingertips, right? So Power BI itself is powerful. Paginate Reports, again, another cool tool with a very good use case. And you mentioned Excel, and we've, we've talked about that before, but Excel as an analytics tool is really, really effective. And so using it for that instead of a database manipulator, um, you, any of those tools can give you great results. All right. Well, Ben, uh, I don't, spoiler alert, I don't want to give too much away, but I think we're going to ask Ben back if he'll if he'll come with us. Won't be next week, but the first Thursday in January, we'll be back talking about KPIs and how those can be formatted here. So Ben, hopefully you'll join us for that and take us through an exciting uh, KPI review for for the 15 minutes. Yep, looking forward to it. Uh, everybody uh, from your friends and preferred strategies, we're passionate about data, we're all about your data, reach out if we can help. But most importantly, we wish you a sincere happy holidays to you, your family and your friends from us at Preferred Strategies. Enjoy the holiday season. 
Thank you for being with us today and have a good day.